is, oh, yep, we're live. It's got the little live oh, in the corner. Okay, cool. Um, cool. I'm trying welcome. to open. Yes, welcome. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I don't know who's here. Neither. My name is Ashley. Uh, obviously, this is my channel, um, but this is the official first too old for this shit book club discussion. Uh, we are discussing uh, Beneath the Scarlet Sky <laughs> by Mark Sullivan. Um, so we will introduce ourselves. Obviously, I've done that already. I will let you do it now. <laughs> Hi, hello. Um, Samantha Leanne Leanslet. Um, that's that's me. Hi, hello. Hi, Welcome to everyone. Um, I don't know. Like, is anyone even in here? I can't see. Hang on a minute. I'm pulling it up. I mean, if they're not, that's cool. That's like, you know, I'll just, you know, cry myself to sleep later. You know, no big deal. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on. It's, uh, okay. So we have one viewer. Ooh, yeah. Hi, Brittany. Hello. Here, let me, let me, let me try. I should have done this before. This is poor uh organization skills on my part i should have pulled that up before but i've got like so many like screens up right now i have no idea what's going on <laughs> i'm actually kind of doing the same thing i'm trying to get the uh live there. chat okay good oh uh, hi there oh there's talia is that how you talia's talia? here let's <laughs> see if anyone show we'll, we'll give it a couple minutes maybe um see if anyone else shows up but i mean if man we're up to if four I, if i was um a wine drinker right now would be a really great time to have a glass of wine listen i've got some moscato in the fridge bust it out bust it out let's do it get your husband yeah get him <laughs> hey hey you over there awesome <laughs> Husband, oh, coming glass of wine. Yes, really, please. I love you. You're the best. Oh, what a sweet, sweet <laughs> See, that's that's on live right now, so everyone everyone knows how awesome your husband is. I so. know, right? Mm -hmm. He's such a sweetheart. Oh my God, what? You getting text messages? Oh, he's sending me stupid memes. Oh, <laughs> Diane's here. Diane's here. Stupid memes. Okay, yeah, we've Hi, got Diane. it. Over. Okay, good. We were kind of terrified that no one would show up. So uh, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. it. It might be a little weird if we're just chatting to ourselves. Um, but no, no big deal. Okay, I guess we should maybe just go ahead and get started. Uh, talking about okay. it um yeah so this was the first book chosen by you guys uh for our first read from january to february um i finished it like the first two weeks of january so i'm a little rusty on the details um so i figured we would just start off and kind of talk about our expectations going into this novel um mm -hmm. i there were a couple of people on booktube that i know that read it and really really loved it I'm a really huge World War II fan, uh, or not World War II fan, World War II fiction fan. So I was very excited to going into this one just because I typically when you read World War II fiction, it's always set in Germany, not often in Italy. So I was very, very excited for this new perspective. So I went in expecting a lot, a lot of good things, that is. Yeah, I, w I would say pretty much the same. Um, historical fiction. I The historical fiction that I usually read is um, like Tudor era English history. I really, mm -hmm. really love that. Um, but I did read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna not that long ago. And I loved it so much. So after having that experience with that book, I was like, oh, okay, another World War II. Like, I really loved that one. I had really high hopes for it. And uh, we know how that turned out. Yeah. I was also excited to know that it was based off of a like true events as well. So like this right. wasn't necessarily truly fiction. Um, so I went in thinking, Hey, this is going to be pretty darn interesting. And at the beginning of the novel, it did have me interested. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll kind of just briefly 
Well, before we get started, has everyone actually read the book? Please leave a <laughs> comment to let us let us know because apparently Leanne let me know um, that sometimes people join live shows and have not read the book, so we don't want to be too spoilery if that is the case. Oh yeah, that one was awesome. Is that a, okay? Yes, I was I like, know. was that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> I also just called you Leanne, and I don't think I've ever called you Leanne before. I don't think that you have either, but I think whatever it might be just, first. Yeah, I was like, I, th I think it's just because, like, your thing was Leanne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for forgive me. It's, it's <laughs> me. <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why it's that happened. Fine. Right. It's so fine. Talia, okay, so Talia liked it. Um, Brittany, did you, did you like it? What did you, what were your thoughts on it? You know, just yes or no is fine. And what about you? There's, I thought there was someone else. No, nope, Brittany. Okay, Brittany and Talia are it. Okay. Just checking. It that looks was... like our, we got a couple other people joining in. As oh, far hi. As awesome. I guess, I guess they, do they catch up from like the very beginning or do, do they start like where we are now? Oh, they'll jump in right now. So whenever oh. they open it, it'll go to the live point. And if they want to like go backwards, they can, I think. Maybe. Cool, 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 cool. Well, we haven't really discussed much. We are literally just talking about uh, whether we liked it or not. Um, well, I guess. We'll, so everyone, uh, so far we've got liked it, uh, loved it, and then I guess yes means they also liked it. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Unfortunately, I did not like this. I didn't like it at all. Um, and uh, Sam? <laughs> I was entertained but I, I i was entertained to a point but i wouldn't say that i loved it for sure yeah i ended up rating it a two a two out and of five stars i gave um, it two and a half but the way that i rate is if i give it like okay if i give it a half star it clearly wasn't enough to be a three so i'm gonna round it down yeah, yeah. and to me uh, and the thing is like i'm i'm a person like usually if i read something and it's pretty like I'm pretty indifferent about it. Like I really didn't love it, but I really didn't hate it. It's usually like a solid three. Like that's my, basically my baseline. Um, so like twos really, I don't often throw out twos, um, but I will say that I've read a lot of World War II fiction. Okay. So maybe to an extent that desensitized me a bit to what was happening in this story, like, which we'll discuss you know, later on, but that might've contributed. And plus my expectations were very high. I was expecting a lot out of this. Um, I'll also say that I did listen to a majority of this on audiobook, and that's probably okay. the only reason <laughs> uh, I was able to get through this. It was because I was able to listen to it at a, you know, like 1.5 or 7.5 speed. That's like so slow. Huh? <laughs> I don't That's know. Like over me, 1.5, 1.75, like I'm a two, two and a half speed. I don't know. No, if it's it too slow, I can't focus. And I just. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I don't know. And I've thought about that when I've seen that some people, I've seen people even jump to three times speed. And I'm like, how are you even comprehending what is going on? Yeah, that's too much. I, I mean, anything past like 1.75 for me, my brain it's it's too fast and I can't and I think it's because a lot of the time when I'm reading a book it's um fantasy and I feel like yeah. fantasy unless you're familiar with the world like it's impo it's almost impossible for me to listen to it anything more than like 1.25 because it's just I don't understand what's going on <laughs> Yeah, I think fantasy is definitely harder to listen to on a higher rate just because there's so much and like, you know, especially like world building and things like that. See, with like Harry Potter, I can listen to that at two speed, no problem, just because I, I know the story. Like if I miss something, it's not too big of a deal. Oh, Brittany, did you love the Nightingale? How did you feel about that? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Almost ripped some cords out there. That would have been bad. Let's not have that happen. No, 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 no. We saw what happened the last time I ripped out those cords. Oh, no. Please, God. No. Well, see, I like how um, Diane said she couldn't put it down, so I loved it. But then she says that she actually rated a three. 
which for me, like a three, like if I love even things that I really love, but maybe I thought still had some flaws, I won't rate a five. Like, if that makes sense. Like, I really, really had to love it to rate it a five. So that's pretty interesting because, like, for me, a three is just, you know, it was, it was me, <laughs> you know, like I, I won't read it again. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So we didn't like, well, I didn't like, Sam didn't like, everyone else seemed to, to like. So this will be an interesting conversation. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So um, I guess we'll just maybe start off and talk about some of the things we liked about the story, perhaps. You want to take this one? Sure. Um, I think the thing that I enjoyed the most about it was the fact that it was based on fact, you know, like this was a real person. And I think that that was one of the most compelling things about it to me. Um, I think as far as description, Sullivan did a really good job. I think that for the most part, it was really easy to picture yourself, yourself in the setting. Um, what else did I like? Yeah, well, it's just so long. <laughs> I mean, it's been it's been a minute since I read it. Like I, I read this back in January, so like forgive me. Um, those were the two biggest biggest things that I liked. Um, and at that point, I can go into things that I didn't like. So tell me what you. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, I did like the beginning. Um, I thought when. It was like right after Pino met Anna or Anna, Anna, and the wherever he lives gets bombed, and it was describing the scene and how like he yeah. was seeing people mutilated. I thought that was really impactful. Um, yeah. it, that was to me very uh, visceral. Like I could, I could, I have a hard time visualizing things in my head, especially if I have not seen it. So for me, like when something I can visualize it perfectly. Like that's that's excellent. That was a that was a good. Um, there, I don't want to talk too much about Anna because, uh, <laughs> but I did find the ending part. You know where she, you know, gets yeah. killed. <laughs> I did find that scene actually. Um, it did evoke a little emotion out of me, which was strange yeah. considering the whole rest of the novel. I was pretty emotionally detached from everything but I did think that that was done pretty well and um I think it would translate very well to the screen like the tv screen uh which we'll discuss later as well okay hold on let me catch up see what everyone's saying yes I oh I love when that you mix historical fiction and fantasy like yeah. that's my ultimate I'm currently reading an arc called the bird king and it's set in is it 15, 15th century Spain. And it's got fan, I mean, uh, fantastical elements in it and it's pretty good so far. So yes, love fantasy and historical fiction. Yep. Oh, hey, JB. He's always talking to me on Twitter. Well, he's a good I guy. Know. I know, good guy. Okay, I haven't read much, so I like learning. Yes, I did find that interesting as well. Um, like I said, most of the time when you read World War II fiction, it's like literally only in Germany. Sometimes, sometimes I read one that was set in Britain, which was really good too. Mm -hmm. What uh, <laughs> what are some things that y'all liked? Uh, since most of everyone who's uh, watching the live show really enjoyed, what were some of your favorite parts about this book? Um, I'm trying to go back in my head and. See, that's not sometimes the bad thing. Like when you start to not enjoy something, you tend to only write things down that you didn't like. So there's not a long list for me of uh, things that I remember really liking. Yeah. Same. Oh, hi. Hi, Rhea. What time is it there? Really it late. I imagine so. That was that was a hard thing when we did our live show last week. I was the only person in the U.S. Everyone else was in the U.K. And I felt really bad for them because, oh. uh, yeah, they had to do it pretty late. One fifteen, damn, Ooh. that is way past my bedtime. Just so we're clear. 
Okay, well, I guess, uh, I don't know if everyone's still typing, but we can read that. I guess we'll maybe discuss some things we didn't enjoy about this novel, because I've got uh, some more things to say about that than uh, I liked. Um, same, same. So you can, uh, you can head up this discussion. Beautiful. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think the number one thing that really made it this unenjoyable was the focus on Anna. Yeah, like, uh, God, somebody else said uh, it. Yikes! Um, it was just really, str- and I knew that 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 was. I didn't feel like the author wasn't very good at foreshadowing. I don't even know if it was foreshadowing. Um, but like Pino met Anna, and like the whole rest of the time when he is at Casa Alpina or whatever that place is called, he literally was like obsessing over this girl that he met once. One time. One time. He literally had, like, the tiniest conversation with her. And not to mention the fact that she literally ditched him <laughs> at their date. And he's still, like, obsessed with her. Um, I don't know. I find that a little creepy, to be honest. Like, I get that he's, you know, like, he's young or whatever. Yeah. And I also get to a certain extent, you know, like, you're a person and you're experiencing these, like, traumatic things or whatever. Yeah. So I think sometimes you're like looking for one thing to like really mm-hmm. hold on. But I don't think that should have been it. You know oh what I mean? Like I, I think it could have been done better. And I, I wrote this in the Goodreads discussion. I felt like this, since this is based off of someone's life, like apparently these things really happened. I just feel like Mark Sullivan did a disservice to him by not writing i feel like if it had been written in nonfiction form yep it would have been way better in my opinion um i don't know i just feel like the way that the author presented the story to me it just didn't feel like it actually happened it felt like it had all been manufactured um i I can agree with that which may be why there's such this such a large focus on anna i mean like maybe talking to the real Pino, he was like, you know, there was this girl and I really liked her and like just thinking of her throughout the day would kind of make my day better. And then that kind of like maybe snowballed into Mark Sullivan's uh, portrayal of that. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe that's not necessarily the way that um, Pino felt, but it would make a more compelling novel if we had, you know, a focus on a romance because most World War II fiction books have a focus on a romance. Um, mm-hmm. But it, I don't know. I just, I didn't ever believe it. Ever. Yeah. Like, I I, <laughs> I've got some quotes. Um, oh, you have quotes? Like, I have, oh, I have, I have some, I have some quotes. Um, because to me, it, it felt like this, you know, little obsession, which I let slide because, you know, like you said, he was young it was during a very traumatic time period. So I'm assuming like to latching onto any type of happiness was what was going to get you to go day by day. So I let it, I let it slide, but then they ended up meeting miraculously, you know? Um, Oh no, we lost, we lost Sam. Help. Where'd she go? Um, I guess I'll just continue on with my uh, spiel about my dislike for Anna um, and Pino's relationship. Um, yeah, so they end up meeting together miraculously, you know, feels a little bit forced, I don't know, manufactured, like, what, are the, what is the likelihood that he actually would meet her again in real life? Probably, probably very slim. But I don't know, I just felt like their relationship felt almost very insta-love, like. Anyone else feel that? Or did it, it, it did y'all really enjoy Pino and Anna's um, relationship? <laughs> that's okay <laughs> we'll see that's that's kind of how I, I felt in the beginning about it was that um he was clinging to her because that's all that he had at that moment you know oh no where's Leanne hold on let me try and message her and see if oh she left the call Mm, I don't know if I need to send her another thing. 
y'all, this is like my worst nightmare, having to do a live show by myself. No, I'm just kidding. It could be worse. Because I really want to discuss some of these quotes that I have when she's here, because she might laugh at them if no one else will. There are actually a couple people in the Goodreads group who did not enjoy this either. Um, not a lot of people who enjoyed it talked at all in the Goodreads. I think the majority of us in the Goodreads group that were talking didn't didn't like this book, unfortunately. Okay, let me let me take Samantha and see if she needs help. Dan Simmons. Whose videos? Mine or JB's? <laughs> it's between the normal life and the new world. I don't know. Is it like you? My laptop died. Oh no. Our laptop died. Oh no. Um. I don't know. See, like, that's what, like, the, she was the best thing in his life, but which would make sense when he reconnected with her and they ended up, you know, having a relationship. But, like, before that, the obsession, uh, I don't know, it just seemed eh, a little too clingy for me. But, you know, it's one of those things that until I experience, oh, hey, is she back? If, you know, I experienced that myself, you know, I would know. But huh, luckily, I have yet to experience something like that. Are you there, Samantha? Oh, there she is. Hey, hey, hey. Can you? He oh, no. Nope. Now she's gone again. <laughs> Uh, if you couldn't tell, this is our first live show. <laughs> hello, hello? Are you there? Oh my god. Is it in my back? Is it in my back? Yes, you are back. I can hear you. Um, I cannot Maybe. I cannot see you, though, at the moment. Okay, I can see you now. And now I can't see you. <laughs> I feel like this live show is mimicking my life. Like, this is how I feel. <laughs> you know? Everything's like loading and trying to get back together. Cool, cool. Yeah. So we we're, uh, I was just just talking about like Pino and Anna, you know, just basic things. Are you on your phone now? Oh, God. Are you still on your laptop? Yeah, I know. Technology can be the devil. <laughs> um, so I could have let the Anna stuff slide, but there were just some moments that didn't seem, I don't know, it felt like a male was writing the story, if you get what I'm saying. Like, oh no, you're, you're hold on, your voice is really uh, strange. I, hello, hello. My laptop was live. Oh no. Hello, hello, Sam. Are you there? Oh my god, my internet is like having a seizure. Oh my god, you need it needs to uh, calm down because like you're you're flashing in and out. Well, like I thought about it. See, that's what I'm saying. I felt like Pino's story was way more, way more compelling. And, like, it didn't need Anna. Like, I felt like he, that could have been added in. But I felt like they put too much focus on Anna when there wasn't an actual focus maybe for Pino in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was just a little part of Pino's happiness. But they chose to focus on that instead of his really compelling real life story of how he was spying on the Nazis, you know, that I totally agree with you, Talia, on that one. Are we back now, Sam? 
I think so. I think that we're good I now. Think, I think, in, okay. Okay, so now, I, I've been trying to wait, hold on to this quote um, because it cracked me up. So Pino and Anna, you know, they do the deed for the first time and they, right. have, a con- they have a conversation afterwards. And um, uh, he's talking about how he admires her and loves her. And Pino says, so I can say I love you. And she hesitated, but then nodded and came to him shyly. You can, oh, that crap, that's not, that's not even the right quote. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Next one. Next quote. Now, here we go. So they're talking okay. about how they just had sex. And <laughs> he says it was the most wonderful night of his life. And he goes, was it? And she responded, you are natural. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I, and I totally missed that, apparently. I completely missed that. What? And then it says, he, grin, he grinned sheepishly and said, think so? Question mark. I was like, who, what woman in the history of ever has responded to a guy after he lost his virginity and tells them, you're a natural? Literally no one. I am here to tell you that right now. Literally no one. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I was like. I literally, in my note, I said, you've got to be fucking kidding me, is what I wrote. Because I was like, that is the most disingenuous conversation I've ever heard in my Mm -hmm. entire life. Uh, When it comes to books, I was, uh, I just thought that was hilarious. To me, like I said, it felt like a male was telling, like, his, I mean, obviously it was his side of the story. But I feel like that actually did not help that happen. Which brings me brings up another conversation is that like Pina Lello is like 80 something years old, right? Like 70, 80. Yeah. So I feel like some of the um, details might've been a little hazy. <laughs> um, and perhaps like, that's just the way that he told the story because, you know, maybe he wanted to embellish a little bit, you know? Right. Like, yeah, I totally had sex for the first time and she said I was a natural, you know. Like, <laughs> That's like a finger guns moment, you know. <laughs> yeah, like no one says that. No. <laughs> Not a single one. Let me try and find someone posted in the group discussion um a quote that was kind of similar to that. Uh, I just gotta find it. Uh, I don't know how to work these discussions. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know this person um, Fiona in the Goodreads account she said apparently they used the term a perfect instrument of love to talk about Pino and uh, no yeah a perfect did I miss that too or do I just not remember it I he probably blocked it out <laughs> <laughs> you're probably right to be fair oh my a perfect in- Please, please. I yeah. don't think that there is a single woman on this planet that's actually used that phrase, like, not ironically. I mean, t- I, okay, um, let's be real. Everyone is a natural at having sex. It's literally not that hard, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. It's that's not a compliment to know that, like, you need to put this this thing in that place. <laughs> you don't want to be too explicit. <laughs> You're right. I want to be explicit, but I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's, yeah. Anyways, um, that's pretty much all that I have to say about Anna. Is there anything that you would like to add, Sam, or anyone else? I mean, I feel like you pretty much just like hit the nail on the head there. That was probably out of the whole book. That was probably my biggest complaint. Oh my gosh. No way. Hold on. Diane said that her first actually said that to you. No. <gasps> <What? What? laughs> I, I cannot I ever complimented a woman before. I'm dead. I'm deceased. <laughs> oh my God. That's. That's good like, stuff right there. You, you don't say you're a natural. You say like, wow, you're really fucking good at this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't say you're a natural. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That I'm is, a big gulp of wine for that. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. I'm that guy. 
He's cool. Apparently. Like, what was your reaction? Because I really like, was that, I don't know. What was your reaction? Like, I really want to know what you thought whenever they told you that. <laughs> I don't even know. I would assume that this person had to have not been a virgin to say that, to know that. You True. Know. True. I would think so. Anyways, um, uh, yeah, honestly, that's pretty much all I have to discuss about this book. Uh, I didn't, I didn't like it. I, I, I felt that it literally the 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 plot felt very disjointed. It almost felt like a conversation. Like mm -hmm. Pino was telling his story, and there were like just huge chunks of things that were missing. I just always felt like there was something more to the story, and I feel like as an as an author, that would have been Mark Sullivan's cue to kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah. But it almost seemed like he took his interview and just like went down the list of, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, and this is how he told me it happened. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Yep, I agree with that. I don't know. To me, it just didn't feel like an actual... I was telling uh, Sam during our... Um, before we got, got live... Not got live. Ugh. Before we went live that I was reading a Goodreads review and someone actually <laughs> made the comparison that Pino Lillo was like Forrest Gump in the sense that Pino Lillo just so happened to be conveniently at every major like Italian um world war ii event um and i thought that was really accurate sadly because it kind of seemed like that i don't know like i said not to say that something like P like that it didn't happen to pino but to me it just didn't actually feel like it happened it, it kind of felt like someone who was like you know i'm really old and i did some of those things but i'm gonna act like i was there right those things <laughs> I, I now that we're talking about that, this made me remember. How did you feel about the guy that Pino worked for? I can't remember his name. General, whatever. I, I don't know if he was general. Oh, I don't remember. How did you feel about him? Like, because I was very conflicted at several different points about his character as a whole. I don't know. Honestly, I, I kind of don't like. I remember him as a character. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember having any strong feelings about him. I just felt like at times he was pretty interesting because there were points where, you know, you could tell that he didn't necessarily agree with what was happening. But yeah. it was a, like, I'm here to save my own skin. Because then there were other, you know, people like the whole um, chasing the goats. Was it goats? Where they were hiding in the trees. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, it was, yes. It was it was something like like goats or something. Yes, yeah. Right. And so they're like in the woods and that guy that was there, like he was major ass hat. Mm -hmm. Like he was a terrible person. And it was like he was supposed to be a terrible person. But I feel like the way that Sullivan wrote the other guy, the guy that he was like spying on or whatever, like he was almost sympathetic because again, like you there were points where you can tell that he didn't want to be doing the things that he was doing yeah. and he was trying to save the people that he could. Um and I thought that out of all of the characters, because like, I, I don't know if he meant to write him like that. I hope that he did. I hope that was intentional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you have like Pino, who's like really idealistic and, you know, like I'm going to do the right fucking thing or whatever. And then, you know, you have this uh, almost morally gray character, I guess, in a sense, yeah. because he definitely wasn't all good. Like a lot of the stuff that he did was, you know, to save himself, but he did yeah. do certain things to try and save other people. I don't know. I just thought that he was interesting. He, to me, was more interesting than Anna. Oh my gosh. Yes. Don't <laughs> so, oh, Anna. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I can't, I, just, I don't have much else to say about that. Just, it, just <laughs> it didn't feel believable to me at all. I, like yeah. I said, I just think that Pino's story on its own could have, it was interesting enough that we didn't need this heavy focus on Anna. Like it right. was unnecessary. Um, trying to think, but like at the end, it t it told you about like the rest of. I don't know. Did you like the, at the end of the book where it was like talking about like where they went after you know the war and everything? Like Pino kind of seemed like a shitty person. Oh my god, I thought the same thing, and I thought it was the only one that thought that. Yeah, I can't remember why. I think it was like he didn't have a relationship with any of his kids and like he was like 
he ended yeah. up like divorcing his wife for some reason. I can't remember why, but I just it remember thinking very like I think that he had a wife, got divorced, had another wife. I might be totally wrong on this. This is just like kind of what I'm remembering right now. But yeah, he like he wasn't a shitbag, but like his life felt like it lacked direction. Yeah, because he ended up in America and was like a race car driver. I feel like that's right. Yeah, let I'm me try and sure. see. Let's see if I can find. I don't know. I wish I had the. I wish I had the book up so I could look it up. But yeah, I that's that was but it, it talked about that general as well. Like he lived out the rest of his life like no big deal, apparently. Because didn't he go to like South America or some shit because they didn't do extradition? I don't know. I thought I he feel lived- like I could be thinking of something totally different. It's entirely possible. Then my only can like he says all these things happen. But what are, I just want to know, like, what are the sources? I mean, I know he's saying that things, things happen. Um, but are, are there, is there any documentation that he, like, he was actually in, uh, he was actually a Nazi and things like that to kind of back it up? And that's, that's a good that's, question. Because I'd be, I'd be kind of curious about that. Just, just saying. <laughs> Not, like I said, I mean, he, these things totally could have happened. But just the way that the author presented them, it didn't, it made it feel not like a real story. <laughs> the book. <laughs> Clorox bleach. Nice. <laughs> uh, there's something else. Oh, also another thing that I mentioned to um, Sam was that this is actually this book is going to become a mini series. Uh, I'm not really sure on what network or what, but Tom Holland, who plays Spider Man, is actually supposed to play Pinoella. And I actually think this is one of those cases that I will enjoy the on screen adaptation a lot more than the novel. I feel like it, I think it'll translate very well. Like, I think I'll actually probably cry my eyes out. Um, when I when I watch it, I agree. I'm looking up the uh, the events. Yeah, well, I'm looking up the series, seeing who has it or whatever. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I like on the Wik- oh, Wikipedia. It says through a series of exceptional circumstances. It's like yes, they are very exceptional. Um, it just. It almost seems like too good to be true. Like he happened. I don't know. Like I said, what is the likelihood that he would actually reconnect with Anna? You know what I'm saying? Right. And the fact that while he was up at that, uh, with the, they're not monks. What are they? Rabbi? It wasn't right. Well, I don't remember. Casa, Casa Alpina. I don't remember. They were Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. And he learned how to drive cars really good, you know, like yeah, really good. It's like that's awfully convenient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say anything about like what network picked it up or what studio picked it up that I can find anyway. Yeah, but I know that I've seen pictures of um, Tom Holland with Pino before. Yeah, it it says that like that's a thing that happened, but it doesn't talk about anything else as far what? I don't know what's happening right now. I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> do, we a, do we have a troll on our live I show? Think that, that yes, with our whole six, seven viewers, one of them's a troll. That's fantastic. How did it happen? Huh. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't, that's pretty much consist of all of my thoughts on this, on this novel. Um, 
sadly, I was disappointed um, that this was our first pick because I went into it with high hope. And yep, it, sadly, it let me down. It let me down. For um, sure. Listen to Bless you. Yeah, excuse you. <laughs> excuse you. Okay, let me think. Anyone does anyone else have any thoughts or any questions pertaining to the book um, that they would like to hear us talk about? Um, like I said, it's been a while since I read the book, so details are a little bit hazy. Yeah. You know? The more that I talk about it, the more I'm like remembering. Yeah, like I'll I'll kind of vaguely remember something and I'm like, hmm. I also mm -hmm. like I usually average between like two and four days to finish a book and I think it took me like two weeks to finish that one. I just had no drive to pick it up most of the time. Because mm -hmm. yeah. again, it just I just hate it because again, it could have been something really great. And I think that what failed it was the writing. You know, I just don't think that it was written strongly enough to be like really compelling. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think in the hands of uh, someone else that this perhaps could have been a lot better, in my opinion, of course, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I agree with you there. Has anybody else written, not written, has anybody else read anything from Mark Sullivan? Because we discovered earlier that he's written like a ton of books, but neither of us had ever heard of him before this book. And the only reason that I'd even heard of this book is because Amazon is like shoving it down your throat. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it's so, so highly rated, just because you see it everywhere. Hey, I guess to read it for free though, so I can't make any complaints. True, true, true. Amazon Prime. Yeah, I was trying to pull it up, but I, I'm using my phone to broadcast. Otherwise, I would have. That way I could try and read the ending of the book to get more about Pino's life after he, uh, after everything happened. Yeah, so, like, I want to know, like, is there any confirmation that Anna was a real person? Because that struck me as odd, because I think in the end it said that they couldn't confirm or whatever because he didn't even know her last name. That's I'm a pretty, good question. I'm pretty sure he, that, that was said in the book that, like, like there wasn't like he didn't even have a picture of her he didn't even he couldn't contact her family because he didn't know her last name I'm like bitch you telling me that you <laughs> love this woman that you guys you know you know you know and you don't even know her last name yep like and you had all these interactions with her like it would be different if they like just had one interaction with each other like a one night stand or something like that but no like <laughs> I thought that was pretty, pretty fishy on uh, on my part. Yeah, I can agree with that part. for sure. Okay. Okay, yeah, it says soon to be a major television event from Pascal Pictures. So I don't know what network that on. But it says, for brands of all the light we cannot see, the Nightingale and Unbroken. I call bullshit. Because <laughs> I loved the Nightingale. I, and I what did we... not love this. I sobbed the last 30 minutes of the Nightingale. Like, when I tell you that book made me ugly cry, like, ugly cry, I was so emotional. And I felt like shock at the end of this book when things happened. But I was not seriously affected emotionally. Yeah. So I'm reading. I'm browsing through a one star review on Amazon and um and just talking about how it seems like it said there are so many instances of characters especially Pino who just so happen to be in the right place at the right time and I'm like that's kind of how it seemed to me it just didn't seem very authentic um yep. just because it, I mean it felt like a manufactured story and I've read, and I've read like stories of events that don't seem real. Like I, I can't imagine something actually happening to someone, but like I, I, like I know that it happened. Like this, I didn't. Uh oh, moving the TV up on the TBR. Yes, it's definitely worth it for sure. 
Okay, not really. The next book is The Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. It's a science fiction novel. Um, I've also heard really, really great things about this one. Actually, the person that also that loved um, it was Jess from Jess Reads Books. Mm-hmm. She, really, she really liked Beneath the Scar- Sky, and she also raves about this book. But I didn't like this one, so I'm hoping maybe this next one I will like. But science fiction is, I don't know, historical fiction is really up my alley, too, so... I haven't read a ton of science fiction, um, but what I've read recently I've liked. um, Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, the Wayfarers series from Becky Chambers, just like makes my heart so happy. Um, But this one is, it doesn't have a ton of ratings on um, Goodreads. It only has like 1,700 ratings, which is a little shocking. Um, Average rating 3.94. The synopsis, I'll go ahead and read the synopsis. His name is Boots. I live. (laughs) (laughs) Boots Ellsworth was a famous treasure hunter in another life, but now she's, oh, it's a she. Whoops, my bad. But now she's washed up. She makes her meager living faking salvage legends and selling them to the highest bidder. But this time she might have stumbled on something real, the story of the Harrow, a famous warship capable of untold destruction. A name that I can't say is the top diver in the Pan Galactic Racing Federation. Okay. And the darling of the racing world until she witnesses the murder of a fellow racer framed for the murder and on the hunt to clear her name. She only has one lead. The killer also hunts a woman named Boots. Okay. So they're both being hunted for various reasons. Interesting. And they're on the wrong side of the law. The two women board a smuggler ship that will take them on a quest for fame for riches and for justice. Ooh, a smuggler's ship. That does sound pretty interesting. I'm not I mean, it lie. actually does. It really does. I listened to the audiobook of A Small Way to Wait. You know, that book. Yes, that book. That Angry book. Planet. Mm-hmm. Angry Planet, yes. And I, that was like a three-star read to me. It was... Okay, see, I, I totally get that because when you, when you talk about that series in particular... It is entirely character driven and not a lot happens. So if you aren't into super character driven books, then it's not going to be something for you. But by the time stuff really started happening in that book, Mm -hmm. I was totally here for it. I was totally invested in the story. Like I was all about it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't realize that I cared about these characters as much as I did. Um, I I I really loved it. I was kind of the opt. I mean, like I, I. I'm okay with a character driven story because I loved like the six of crows duology. And personally yeah. I found that the plots were a hot friggin' mess. Like they were <laughs> yeah. really that great. They were pretty basic and, um, or convoluted in crooked, in crooked kingdoms case. Um, so I'm okay with character driven stories, but I don't know. I just didn't. And maybe it was because I r- listened to it through the audiobook, perhaps sometimes mm-hmm. that may be the case, but I didn't really care about any of the characters. Like they were okay. Like, yeah. and then when I saw that the companion novel was about, I can't remember his name, but it was like the guy who was in love with the AI, I think. Um, he had a very small part in that. It was more of the AI. The AI yeah, I didn't care for the AI. Like, I didn't care. And I was like, ah, I know that I'm not going to enjoy that. So I'm just going to, you know. I mean, I get that. I still, I have the third one on my shelves, but I haven't read it yet. Like part of me, I don't know. Maybe I'll read that for sequelathon. Who knows if I ever pick up another book ever again? <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm struggling. So, like, I'm going through audiobooks pretty, pretty well. On mm-hmm. um, the like physical novels, because I've had arcs back to back to back. So, like. Usually, I, I'll read the physical copy and then listen to the audiobook as I'm going to work, so I can get through a book book pretty fast but since i had arcs i can only read them off my phone and for some reason i read books a lot slower on my phone than i do when i have a physical copy so i'm struggling real hard i feel Um, that i've been reading an arc for a full month and part of it part of the reason that i've been reading it for a full month is because i don't like it but i'm a completionist yeah like just to give you an idea of what my thought process is in this book, like this woman gives birth to, tw- to twins in, in the very beginning of the book. 
And um, the whole birth experience is like, thank God I'm not a mom, first of all. And second of all, I'm like, what hospital are you at? Because uh, this is not how they treat people. And where is your husband? Why is your husband not with you? Like, it's really bizarre. The whole thing's bizarre. And it's like, from the very beginning, it's just been like such a bad taste in my mouth because of that. Yeah, I just. Yeah, yeah this is really weird. Okay, so JB asked me, and you, what's the best historical fiction story you've read slash listened to? Okay, so the only, not the, it's not really a problem, but for some reason, I only read like historical, like alternate history. So I like, guess it's, it's, technically it's historical fiction, but like there's a twist in that there's something that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Um, so I'm going through my good, good reads list. Um, Cause I've got a lot of really great, I actually have an entire video, you know, on my YouTube channel about this. <laughs> so I'm trying to go through um, and actually look at like strictly historical fiction. Um, I've mentioned the Nightingale like four times already, but I loved that one so mm-hmm. much. And I think, I think one of the reasons that I love historical fiction so much personally is because these are real things that happen to real people. And of course it's fictionalized, but you know, it's not outside of the realm of possibility and that's something that I struggle with. So it's, I do the same thing with historical fiction books a lot of times, Mm -hmm. you know, especially like war era things that I do with movies. Like we watched Saving Private Ryan and Mm -hmm. I cried the entire (laughs) movie, the entire movie I cried. It was- it was not good. Um, brother, I've never seen that movie, surprisingly. Oh, we, we, really good. We watched, we watched recently, it's, I mean, I would consider, it's like an alternate history, I don't think you could say it's alternate history. It's like historical fiction, but with fantastical elements. It's called Overlord, and it's uh, set during World War II, and um, it's about the experimentation of the Germans, and how they were trying to I mean, they were just experimenting on people and how they were trying to prolong life and about the thousand year Reich. So they kind of make like zombies ish. I was actually heard about that. Yeah, it's actually really, really good. Um, Like the first like 15, 20 minutes, it's just like strictly like a battle scene. And my heart was racing. Like it, it, it made me very upset because I mean, like that happened to a lot of people like they experienced something like that in the war um it was really it was really good it was very interesting i thought it was really good but my to me personally the best historical fiction that i've ever read is actually gone with the wind by margaret mitchell like oh yes i do I'm enjoy a, that very much. I'm, a, I'm a basic southern bitch and i love gone with the wind like i acknowledge that it's racist as hell. Yes, it's very, very, very racist. <laughs> um, obviously, it was written during a time where there were hella racist people. I mean, to be fair, there still is. Um, but uh, yeah, I love, I love it so much. I never thought that I would conquer that one because it's such a huge book. I was yep. like, there's, there's not like what, what, what's about this book? But I, I fucking love it. I, I love Scarlet. I, I love to hate Scarlet. Like, I love her, but, like, obviously she's not a good person. She's pretty mm-hmm. terrible. She really <laughs> is. But to me, that's the... I mean, like, you could, that's how you know that Margaret Mitchell's a really great wa- writer in the fact that you know that you should hate her, but yet you feel for her at the same time, and you're also rooting for her, um, even though she does these really awful, terrible things. Um, basically, everyone's really terrible in that book. I don't... I think Melanie is, like, the only one who was decent. I can agree with that. I think that she really was one of the only people that was actually decent. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the only other, because again, like I stick inside my comfort zone for the most mm-hmm. part. Um, and, you know, I stick to a lot of Tudor era. I have read so many books about Anne Boleyn. It's ridiculous. Um, but the other Boleyn girl, which is more about uh, Mary Boleyn and it's Philippa Gregory. I'm trashed for Philippa Gregory. I fully <laughs> admit this. Um, so I read most of her books, but another historical fiction, whoops, another historical fiction author that I've been really enjoying, especially lately, is Anne Chi Min. I knew you were going to uh, say it. I knew you were going to say it. I really want to watch um, her memoir was one of the best memoirs uh, I've ever read in my life, hands down. Loved it. But she 
also has read about, um, not read about, written about like Maoist China and then one of the last Chinese empresses. And um, both of those were really good. She has a different writing style. So mm -hmm. I think that that I've seen some people struggle through it just because of her writing style, but I found it to be pretty interesting. Yeah, so I, I love recommend it. My list. Um, another one that I also really enjoyed, I'm trying to not do World War II fiction because like I said, the, most of the ones that I like are um, like, I really like the Wolf by Wolf series or duology, but that's like historical fiction, alternate history slash science fiction. Like mm -hmm. it's got shape shifters in it. So I really don't consider that, but um, Burial Rites by Hannah Kent is oh, awesome. I have that one on my yeah. shelf and I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's very good. It's also based off of um, a true story. This this is what I expect out of a book based off of a true story. Like mm -hmm. to me, this, it was, it's very bleak um, and the atmosphere of like the backdrop of Iceland against this very bleak story, they kind of like meld into one another. Um, and to me, it kind of like almost mimicked, like the environment mimicked like her story, which is very cool. Um, but it, I mean, that's at times you're kind of like slugging through it a little bit. You're like, okay, what's going on? But I don't know. I still really enjoyed it. The, her writing is so good. Like so fucking good. Like when you talk about good prose, Hannah Kent has got some good prose. Uh-oh, we got a fella Philippa Gregory fan. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> I've never read any of her stuff. I'm, I've always been tempted to because I also really like historical fiction, but it's definitely dramatized and a lot of them are definitely sexualized. Um, I would recommend if you ever wanted to read her stuff, um, I will always recommend the other Boleyn girl, um, but her cousin's war series. I really liked a lot of her stuff that predates um, other Boleyn girls. So like the queen's full and the, the constant princess. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't love those. And you can tell that it's very early in her writing career. Mm -hmm. Um, but the cousins war, I think I heard that series. I think that I liked that a lot because at that point I hadn't read a lot from that era. So yeah. she does a good job of making it interesting and staying relatively true to actual events. And like, you can go and read a Wikipedia page and like, you know, figure out what was real and what wasn't, um, but I really like that. Another author that I've read a couple historical fiction um, from is C.W. Gortner. Hmm. Read I one of that. his called uh, The Queen's Vow, I think. But it was about Isabella of Castile, who is um, Catherine of Aragon's sister, ruler of Spain, mm -hmm. the Mad okay. Queen, right? Yeah. So I had never read anything about her before. And, and that was, mm -hmm. she was the one that paraded her dead husband around forever. Like, kept his body with her all the time. And so everybody thought she was crazy. And so it's told from her perspective and like exactly how all of that came about, you know, obviously fictionalized, but I really liked it. I thought it was good. See, the book that I'm reading right now is set in that, that same time period, but it's in, I don't even know what it's called. Cause it, I just referred it. They refer to it as a uh, Muslim Spain which I didn't know was a thing. Like, I didn't know that yep. there ever was a thing. At, I don't know how to pronounce it. Al, it's all, I'll just type in Muslim Spain. But anyways, I'm reading a book that's set during that same time period. Uh, and so far, it's like really good because that's not a time period. All a, a Andalus. Mm, that's what okay. So it's like right underneath where they were living in Spain is this which I'm assuming I think that they actually get conquered by them. Pretty interesting so far, but I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far. But yeah, I usually, when I, now that I've started booktube, like before I've read a lot of historical fiction, but now that I'm on booktube, I've kind of morphed more into just fantasy. Uh -huh. um, and when I do read historical fiction. It has more like either science fiction or fantastical elements along with it. So it's not just historical fiction. But to mm -hmm. me, the, I like the blend of fantasy and historical fiction. Yeah, I agree with that there. Um, JB says his favorite historical fiction is Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Mm -hmm. That was a really good one. I really liked that. Did you read that one, Ashley? No, I didn't. 
it's we're actually really good. I read another one of his, um, Zone One, I think it was, which is actually like about zombies. It's very uh, different, but I liked that one significantly less than Underground Railroad. But it was that one was really good. Yeah, I need and to then the Night Circus, Magic and Historical Romance. I loved the Night Circus. Really good, Brittany. Also, always been on my list. It's like, but I just never made that jump just because it's it's pretty hyped on the on the book two world. I find that people either absolutely love it or they think that it's shit. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I've heard that as well. Some people just, but I don't know. Like, what do they not like about it? Um. Well. It's very descriptive, like mm -hmm. very descriptive. But I feel like because of the what the story is, like you have to be descriptive. Yeah. Um, so some people, you know, said that it was boring. It is definitely more character driven than anything, I think. Okay. So again, if you're not huge into character driven stories, then it might not be for you. But I personally really liked it. <laughs> Twelfth hour is yes, that is actually on my list of because I went through this period where I really tried to find World War II fiction with fantastical elements, but it's almost all strictly like paranormal, like werewolves, vampires, and things like that. I'm like, no, I want like real fucking magic. Like, I don't know, <laughs> not like supernatural creatures. I want magic, which is kind of how Romanov by Nadine Brands is. It's it hasn't. It hasn't been released yet. It's it's coming out oh, in like maybe. That um, was for request on NetGalley, and I almost mm -hmm. requested it, but I had like four other things that I was waiting to hear back from, and I was like, I better not do this to myself. Yeah, yeah. There's actual like it doesn't play a. Pr I mean, it kind of plays a prevalent part. It's not like a complicated magic. It's like spell. Like I guess you write a spell and you say it, and then. So, so, but it's not like explained very well, but it's pretty straightforward. Like you don't feel confused at all. But I, I actually really liked it. I ended up rating it like four out of five stars. But I feel that if you don't really know a whole lot about the Romanov family and are not familiar with their story, that this one might be a story that really is because it's a majority of the book is when they are at the. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. The I the the basically the last place that they were. The last yeah. place that they were in prison. The I Patev. House. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I can't, I couldn't say it either. Don't worry. So yeah, they're that's literally they're there seventy to eighty percent of the book, and you know they didn't have basically they were allowed to go outside and eat, and that was essentially it. So it's kind of if you're not really familiar with their story, it's going to be pretty boring. But yeah, I, I was really I was really into it. I really liked it. The Changeling. Okay, let me down with The Changeling. I have not read that yet. Um, pretty much almost every book that I have read because of BookTube, because of the hype, I have not liked. Or, I'll take that back, sorry. Not that I didn't like, but I didn't love. Um, the only one, Outlander, I really loved, and then Six of Crows. Those Outlander. are the other. <laughs> yeah, Outlander. Uh, but that was like 2016, actually. Um I mean, I think if I went back and reread it, I would still really oh, like it. Listen. But <laughs> I read that book like four times. Okay, I read the first one four times. I read the second one twice, and I think that I read it for the first time in like 2011. Okay, mm -hmm. and I loved it all about Jamie Fraser. Okay, mm -hmm. like right, right. Book boyfriend, like I'd mm -hmm. marry him. I'm so sorry. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, absolutely loved him. And then, you know, I read it another couple of times in the beginning of last year, I think it was. Yeah. Beginning of last year, I did a huge buddy read with a bunch of people that had never read it before. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. <laughs> and everybody hated it except for like two people. And I didn't love it as much that time around, not because yeah. everybody else was hating on it because half of them didn't finish it, which is fine. Like, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. I have nothing to say about that. But just I think after having been on booktube and like really learning how to really read more critically mm -hmm. and actually seeing some of those problematic elements like I still like it I'll still I'll still reread it like I'm a stan forever whatever um 
but I definitely see like it, it's a little problematic for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's one of those things that when you look back on it, cause I, I really enjoyed Outlander and I didn't think that I was going to continue on with the series because I was like, what the fuck could they be talking about for another eight books? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, these books are, and they're not, it's, just, it's a commitment. Um, yeah, it is. Ended up reading Dragonfly and Amber and I was so glad to be back in the world because, I mean, it's a very, I think that she does the historical part very well. Yes, yeah, she does. Um, and I really liked Jamie and I was a Jamie stan, of course, as well. Um, but there were just everything at that point, like everything was just too contrived. Like mm -hmm. everything was just set up perfectly just for right. dramatization and things were put in there for shock value. Uh, I don't like the way that she handles now looking back like sexual assault yes. and the abuse of children and things like that. That's all for shock value for plot points. And I, right. So I'm, I have Voyager and I've had it since 2016 and it's been on my shelf and I don't think I'm ever going to make it. I, I think, think that I did. I did the exact same thing that you did. I read the first two and I think that I actually did start Voyager at one point and just never finished. Yeah. And I probably never will. I think that at this point, there are just too many other books that I want to read mm -hmm. to commit myself to a series that's that large. Because the other thing, too, is not even that it's a long series. Like, you're looking at a 600-page book every single time. And I'm just, it's not a priority for me at this point in time. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I talked to Maddie from the Book Pusher about it because she was a really big Outlander fan. But she basically told me, like, you can read Voyager, but, like, past that point, like, you don't have, like, you can just not. Like, oh, <laughs> you can just not. If, I, if I ever feel like I'm in the mood, I guess, because I own it, I might eventually end up passing it on to someone that I think that will like it. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, mm -hmm, Outlander. But, yeah, those are the only two books or that I really think was worth the hype. Um some books that I didn't think that were worth the hype, The Name of the Wind, which is a very unpopular opinion. Um, I loved it. The, the Mistborn trilogy, also Agreed. also a one that I didn't think that was worth the hype. Now, Agreed. talking about The Name of the Wind, there are certain things, I when I first, I, I, I actually talk about this in, a, in an upcoming video, I believe, but when I first got done with it, I rated it like a 3.75. So like I was on the verge of like really, really enjoying it. Like there were certain elements that I really, really liked, but I couldn't quite pinpoint like what was holding me back from like loving this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then like upon reflection and reading other people's reviews, I just didn't like quotes or quotes or however the fuck you say his name. I don't know. Oh. That guy, he's, he's such a, right. he's, I mean, literally he's the ultimate Gary Sue. <laughs> um, it's, it's so good at everything you're and, not wrong um and there was a poor and i think i really would have enjoyed it but there was like a like a 150 page portion where her him and like D dinna i don't know mm -hmm. her name dinna were in a cave like i think and she was like high on drugs or something yes oh my god that part was so incredibly boring to me i was like are we ever going to make it past this and then once yeah. we did get past, I mean, it, that scene was way too long. Like it shouldn't have been that long. Um, and then once we got back, I was just like, I didn't really care that much anymore. <laughs> but the only reason why I'm tempted to continue on is because I was really into the Chandrian. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yes. They were really cool. I thought that was uh, done very well. Yeah. I'm really interested to see where he goes with it next month. April. Yeah, April. I'm actually going to read um, Wise Man's Fear with uh, Jessica from Game of Tomes because oh she God. really loved the first one. Does she not look so fucking cute with her septum done? Girl, I'm going on Tuesday. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so, I asked her if it hurt because I really want my done too. Yes. She, I um, said her the same thing. I saw it on Instagram and you know they're going to be at Booknet Fest this year, right? Yes, I'm, so excited. I'm so excited that I get to hug them. Like, I am so excited about it. I know we live really close. I think we live like maybe three hours away from each other. And I really want to do a Nashville meetup, but I'm just like me. I'm a procrastinator. So I feel um, that. I feel that. But like if we do something in Nashville, like your girl will be there. It's it's like it's a little dry for me, but your girl will be there. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not too bad. It's like what? It's, it's like six it's, hours. 
Okay, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking it was less than that. But yeah, six hours isn't bad. I know my husband was actually thinking about doing going on vacation, and he was talking about going somewhere in South Carolina, and I was like, yes, do that. How do y'all see Sam? <laughs> Girl, tell me where y'all talking about going, and I can tell you all the good places to go. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, I don't remember where it was. It it wasn't Charleston, though. It was somewhere else. Like upstate or coastal? Fuck if I know. It, it, was, <laughs> it, it was on a list, he said, of like top 10 like tourist places in the U.S. this year. I guess like more unknown places, not like, oh, you know, New York City or Miami, like actual mm-hmm. like, kind of underrated places. Anyways, we are digressing. Yes, um, we are. Sorry. Uh, anyone else have any uh, questions about books, I guess? <laughs> Man, homegirl ain't got time for that, okay? My brain isn't smart enough for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, sometimes I, miles? I haven't heard of that. I have heard of that. Um, I forgot what the guy's name is, but I have heard of that. I think L from Elliot Brooks really likes that series. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, I have heard of Sherilyn Kenyon, but not... I'll, like I'll, I'm okay with romance in my books, but I'm not typically a huge fan of just romance. Unless I'm like I'm in the mood, which rarely ever in the mood. Same. Um, I read a couple so last year, and uh, that was an experience. Like my first real like erotica book, I listened to on audio, Ashley, and I don't recommend. I, I don't, don't know. I recommend. I listened to the the kiss quotient on. Um, on audiobook and it was I pretty I mean it was funny because I mean my husband wasn't home but I always listen to my headphones when like my bluetooth headphones so I'm sitting there eating dinner I mean and they're like being very explicit and I'm just like <laughs> you know, yeah. trying to keep my chill over here while they're saying very graphic things See, I read um, kiss quotient and that I read what was it American Queen by somebody oh, yeah. I almost Girl. listened to that one because of your recommendation. Almost. Listen. Almost. It's so, so, so intense. Like, like, like sexually, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the. Listen. Okay. <laughs> like, it's one of those where I wouldn't even listen to it in my car because I'd be afraid that somebody would hear what I'm listening to because, like, it gets very. Like, it's hot at points. Like, I'm not going to sidestep that fast. <laughs> However, you get to the end and it's like, I don't know about this. <laughs> you know? Like, ooh, like, ooh, you're ooh. like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Luckily for me, like, most of my driving's on the interstate. So I don't have to worry about anyone hearing that. But, yeah. A vampire wizard? Huh. Vampire wizard. Interesting. Interesting. You know. I feel like that has got to be a thing. I feel like it has to be a thing, too. There's no way that that can't be a thing. I'm sh- Uh, I feel like it, if it is, it's probably not very written well. That sounds bad, but... A vampire. Have you ever looked it up? Vampire wizard. I don't know. I feel like I was just thinking about that the other day, like a book that I need in my life that doesn't exist yet, but now I can't remember what it what it was. But I, I like we were talking earlier, like I need a World War II book that's also fantasy. Like mm-hmm. I, I would love to see something like because I love high fantasy, but I would like to see it translated into the real world. And I know a lot of people will be like, "Oh, well, that's urban fantasy." No, most urban fantasy is like werewolves and shit like that and yeah that stuff is okay but that's not my forte (laughs) diane you're phrasing there (laughs) throbbing and trembling against the background of the civil war (laughs) (laughs) no i was uh i and this was uh, in my wrap-up video i read shit what is her name grace draven is that her name that sounds familiar. Hold on, I'll get, I'm on my Goodreads. Hold on. I think that's her name. Anyways, I read one of her books because most people, yeah, Grace Draven, um, people who really read romance, uh, Lauren from the, the novel Lush recommended her. 
um, because it's like a fantasy romance. So I was reading that. And at one point, like the sex scenes were pretty good. But at one point, uh, she wrote that he was, um, fuck, what did she say? It was really awful. Hold on, let me see if I can pull it up. Of course I can't. Oh, I think I got it. I always take notes on my books. So let me see if I can find it. It was in Master of Crows. Okay, yeah. He said, one re referred to multiple times as he, him, he was mounting her. I was like, nobody wants to say that. Why would you mount? Why would you say, like, that's, that's not sexy. That's so not sexy. That's not <laughs> sexy. And I was expecting better because this is a female writing this. This is not a male. This is a female. Okay. Um, where I, yeah, I think she identifies as female, I guess I should say. But yeah, at one point she says, and she was impaled on his cock. I was like, what? <laughs> impaled. I was like, nobody, well, that's not sexy. Like, <laughs> you, <laughs> what? Yeah. I was like, impaled on it. I can think of a million better ways to describe that. Yep. That sounds painful. Very it really painful. does. It really does. Um, so, yeah, uh, I thought that was really funny. Other than that, it was an okay book, you know, for a fantasy or a romance fantasy, should I say. It wasn't very heavy on the fantasy, but mm -hmm. yeah, look, I mean, like the definition of impale is to pierce or transfix with a sharp instrument. And if your man's penis is sharp, <laughs> we got a problem. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, being a writer, I would think that she would be able to do the word impale properly, but apparently not. Uh, she just got a little bit too happy with the thesaurus and was I like, oh, this will work. It's fine. Everything is fine. I guess and so. And her editor must, I don't, I don't know what her editor. Well, that's thought, that but so Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like well, maybe a pattern not random with too many hot scenes in a short amount of time. I don't know. Like, well, for me, when I want to read a romance for, like, the steamy scenes, I need it to, like, hurry up. Because I was reading this book, Master of Crows, and it felt like it took friggin' forever for the action to happen. I'm like, I don't want a plot, okay? I don't really want that. I don't really need that right now. I just want sexy times. Um, so I, need <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to find something with the balance of, like, it's not completely terrible, but also has, which I felt like the kiss quotient, for the most part, really did well. It was actually a um, compelling story, even though it was a little ridiculous at times. Uh, it totally was, but I thought that it was, like, cute enough that it just totally made up yeah. for it. I was so upset because I requested it on NetGalley, uh, The Bride Test, mm -hmm. uh, which is the companion novel. Um, that mm -hmm. has some of the characters or whatever. And I was like, oh, God, please, please, please. And then uh, I got denied, which I figured no. I would. I figured I would. I got denied for that. And then I requested the newest Josh Mallerman book, too. And I also got denied for that. Oh, that stinks. It's because Probably. I'm really bad at actually reviewing the books. Well, see, yes. I've actually been really good about that this year. I'm proud of myself. I've requested. I've already reviewed two so far this year but I've also I've done one but I've I've got one two three four five I got five more though but like I said most of these they came so quick like three or four of them were in a month period and I was like shit why did I do that to myself but I thought that I was going to have more time to read but I was mistaken <laughs> but I did get approved for Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and I'm super excited Ooh, about that. that'll be good yeah, but luckily that's not due until it doesn't come out until August. So I've got. Oh yeah, you've time. got plenty of time for that. Other time. Okay, I've got to read that book. Which book are we talking about? Yeah, which book are you talking about, Jamie? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not looking for sexy times. To me, that's to me. I like realistic. I mean, like realistic to to a point you know what i'm saying like nobody wants to read like a two minute love you know you know what i'm saying like a two minute love scene <laughs> i did there is a, a book that i did request on netgalley called the last czar's dragons hmm. 
it's obviously set during the Russian monarchy. It looks like during the Bolshevik Revolution, and it has dragons in it. So <laughs> that sounds like my high fantasy meets historical fiction. Baby. Very excited about that. That does sound interesting. But it has two authors to it. I'm like, hmm. Sometimes that can be good and sometimes it can be bad because I've had the experience with, so for example, one that comes to mind is um, Sleeping Beauty, Stephen King and Owen King. That book Mm -hmm. in its own right was not good in my personal opinion, Um, but you can absolutely tell that there are two authors versus um, say The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Had no idea that that was two writers. Like it just was so cohesive, so good. That's awesome. Yeah, I did send a request for the Dragon Republic by RF Kuang. Fingers crossed that I will get approved for it because that's like one of my most highly anticipated books of the year. Yeah, I've got declined. I got declined for the Gilded Wolves. Um, but I'm kind of glad I did because I don't think that I would actually like that by Roshni Chokshi. I heard like that was really hyped by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And then I saw another handful of people that were like, this is not good. Yeah. Like, I think, okay. I think it's also, it's kind of like the night circus. It's, I think it's a specific type of person has to like her writing. I mm-hmm. read her debut novel, 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 shit. What was it called? I don't remember, but I read it and I was not into it at all. I thought that it was one of those times where like she spoke in metaphors, like her Mm -hmm. prose was so over the top that like I couldn't visualize anything that she was saying because it was all metaphors. And I'm like, that's just not the way that my brain works. So I couldn't picture anything that was happening. Um, but it's a Star Touched Queen by Roshni Chokshi. Uh, okay. That's another one that I honestly heard a lot of mixed things about. Yeah. So, uh, but I was, once I heard that this was like a high story and I heard a lot of people hyping it up, I was like, maybe I'll give this this author another shot. But then I was watching um, from the Bibliophiles, her channel. She did a review on it. And she kind of talked about some things that I had issues with in this book, the Star Touched Queen. So I was like... Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that one. Mm -hmm. Another book that I'm going to stay away from is, for for now anyways, is Black Wolf, wait, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. Oh my gosh, so hyped. Yeah, it's so hyped. And I've read, or not read, I've watched a couple of reviews from different people that I really trust. And um, I just don't think I have the emotional capacity right now to to handle that book (laughs) it sounds I think that it's one of those books that like you have to read it at the right time um -hmm. and I just think right now is the right time I feel that I I hope that maybe in the next year or so I'll be able to invest it's also it's also a really large book too Mm -hmm. so um but yeah, does uh, anyone else have any questions (laughs) we could wrap this up maybe about 7 30 or my time like you know 8 30 your time yeah that way we, we're not here all night because you know i could i could just sit here and talk all day if we if you give me the, the time to do it but no ain't nobody want that <laughs> i feel I like i feel like if anyone decides to watch this after we have the live show they're gonna be like what <laughs> you talked about the book for like three seconds and then to be fair at least we talked about books that's true at least there's that that's true, but good, that's, like, I'm gonna be better. I'm waiting to read our next book club pick closer to the date. That, um, but like I said, at the time that I read it, I assumed that we were doing one book a month. So right. I didn't, I didn't think that I would have to wait until March to do it. Um, so there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel what you're saying. But I have a good feeling about this next one, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's going to be a good one. Um, a lot of people seem to really enjoy it. Um, I think that it'll be good. Yeah. I just got a... No, I got it from Audible. I'm listening to it on audio, audiobook, so... 
that's the only downside to. I listen to so many audiobooks. Like, yeah. there's been very, very few audiobooks that have totally like broken an experience for me. I get that. I hear a lot of people say, you know, like if you have the wrong narrator or whatever, it can be uh, not great. And, you know, yeah. yeah, that's true. But I've not had that experience very often, which I'm grateful for because I listen to most of what I read, like most of the physical books that I have on my shelf. Um, I've been slowly like requesting from the library so I can get through it faster because yeah. I do not have time to sit and read a whole book most of the time. But. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I've been trying to do and I've been failing at it miserably. <laughs> yeah. So. so we shall see. Yeah. I, I would like to do both like listen to audiobook and um, read the physical. I mean, mm -hmm. see, that's the only thing that I was reading um, a, a fantasy book and the audiobook was pretty good. But mm -hmm. since I had never, I wasn't familiar with anything like the words and I mean like names and places were kind of getting all mixed up. So I finally picked up the um, library copy and it made it so much better. Like be, yeah. even be, just to physically see the names and stuff really, really helped me out. Um, thanks JB. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, well, Diane asked, what are our thoughts on VE Schwab? Um, to be honest, I don't have any thoughts because I've never read anything by her. Um, Same. To be honest, I, I don't know. Nothing she's ever put out has ever sounded really interesting to me. I think her, I think it's her Vicious trilo Trilogy. That sounds kind it's of interesting. Duology, isn't it? Yeah, because someone mentioned that it's kind of like the X-Men a little bit, like X-Men-like powers. and but with a know. lot of murder. Yeah, so that, but I don't know. I've heard the Vicious duology is really good. And then the only other one that I think that I would be remotely interested in, which is funny because I have a book of hers on my shelf that is not either of these two series. Mm -hmm. um, but the Vicious duology and Darker Shades of Magic. Um, I have the first book on audio from Audible. And then I have the Monsters of Verity, the first one. What is it? Um, the Savage Song, I think, mm -hmm. is what it is. Mm, yeah. And I've heard mixed things about that one. See, so oh, that was, okay. that was yeah. one of those books that was on the Trash My TBR that everybody is like, it was just okay. You can skip mm -hmm. it. That's, yeah, that sucks. Well, that's kind of pretty much everything that I've heard about V.E. Schwab has been very mixed. Yeah. So I guess that's maybe why. I think it's one of those cases like you either you really like her stuff or you really don't. And yeah. I also feel like that with, with Catherine and Valente as well. Um, I've read a couple of her things and I don't know, like I really liked space opera, but I thought I was in a really weird, like our friend had unexpectedly passed away. So it, like that wasn't really a good time to be reading such like a strange. Right. Um, so I think I want to go back and re listen to the audio book, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe she's just one of those authors that I'm just never going to, you really got to dig deeper into her writing. And I'm, like I said, I'm just, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I can understand that. I think a good story can survive a terrible narrator. I, don't think I agree. Ever, the only time that I've ever, I listened to Julie C. Dow's um, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. And the narrator was okay. But she, all of her male voices sounded like when you make fun of an old person, like, yeah, I'm an old person. <laughs> like that's how all of her mail sounded. And it was oh, too God, awful. hilarious. Yeah. I was not a fan. Um, I ended up like that book was just like a three star. So I think that would, that would have been a book that if I had perhaps read it instead of listening to it, that I would have liked it more, but would I have loved it? I, mean, I don't know. I always have that in the back of my head when I read something just strictly on um, audiobook. I don't know, like, if it's the audiobook that's causing me not to like it. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's happening? It's just what Diane said. By the way, I told the guy who said I was a natural that he wasn't. <laughs> Whoa. I live. That's the best. Oh, my God. That is. That that like, oh. that's savage that's savage as fuck and i love it 
Yeah, that is <laughs> hilarious. You're not. <laughs> No, that's ruthless. Ruthless. It, yeah. Okay. I guess um I guess we've exhausted all of our <laughs> for now anyways. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not everyone has time to sit here 14 hours and listen to us chat away. You're right though. You're right. We need to, we need to do this with uh, the the Booknet Fest crew. We need to oh get a, a live live i feel like it would just be all of us yelling at each other and talking over each other you know what though we're so fucking fun it would be amazing <laughs> right so when you were talking about going and getting a tattoo at bnf yes. i was thinking like i legit might do that and get a pineapple on me oh my god yeah. ashley that's yeah. the best idea that i've ever heard that's what, I was thinking. that's what i'm thinking if anyone else wants to go uh um, yes hi hello count me in pineapples pineapples oh my god i love it that's honestly the best thing it really is the best idea ever we'll have to tell them in the in the group chat we definitely yeah. will we definitely will <laughs> oh my god i hope you guys come back to our next chat because y'all are fun yes like, i'm totally okay that there's only been like five people in here like that it I makes like it it makes it easier to manage because yeah. like i don't know if you've ever seen um like what's her name? Um, Julie and Chelsea's drunk live show. Like that chat just goes off and it's like, it's hard to follow everything that's going on. Yeah, so. yeah. And plus we get to like interact with everyone. Like I can be like, right. Hey Diane, Hey JB, like answer your question. But you know, sometimes when things are popping off, you're like, wait, I have to scroll forever. So yeah, this is, this is a fun time. We'll have to, yeah, uh, obviously we'll do it again in two months. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, this is the conclusion. Sorry that we digressed a lot and went on tangents on other things, but hopefully it was, it was entertaining. <laughs> All right, yeah. bye, everyone. Bye. bye.